Hello everyone, Renee here. As Daisy 1.0 has just been released and is a fairly difficult game, I decided to create this guide to get you started. On a side note, thanks to the Daisy developers, I have a few Daisy items to give away. Three copies of Daisy, two t-shirts, and one package with a hoodie and a t-shirt. Please leave a valuable comment under this or one of the upcoming videos and I will announce the winners at the beginning of each upcoming video. First thing that happens to you in DayZ is that you spawn somewhere. This is fairly random, but you only spawn at the east coast and the half of the south coast. Where you want to go is completely up to you. If you spawn at night, you can light the flare in your inventory, but it only lasts a certain amount of time. So keep on the lookout for batteries and lamps, or get yourself a torch going. You can create a torch with a knife alone. Please see the description for a link to an infographic for any sorts of lighting created by Helldogs on the Barony Infected forum. You start by needing water as your first priority and food as your second priority. If you spawn at the coast, most of the time there is a big road you can walk on. If you don't see any houses or a village, you can go to either way to find them. I highly suggest that you stick to the roads until you learn the map a little better. If you find yourself lost, you should look out for roads, train tracks, trails, power lines and even little rivers as they will all lead to something. Downstream is usually leading to a coast or a lake and upstream will mostly lead you landwards. I know it's fun and easy to sprint but it makes you thirsty and hunger faster so I would recommend only to do that if you have enough supplies or are in danger. In almost every village or city is a well so it would be wise to make locating it one of your first priorities. Checking civilian houses to find a can of soda or food might be wise as well. I would not recommend drinking from ponds or streams if you do not need to, as they can make you sick. If you find a water bottle, canteen or cooking pot, you should bring it along and fill it up at each time you get to a well. Make sure you also check in clothing lying in the houses. They might just contain what you need. Killing zombies might also be profitable, as they can also carry supplies. Besides food, you want to look out for a melee weapon that you can carry on your back, or of course, for a gun. At the moment of uploading this video, the shotgun or Makarov are most likely the first guns you can find and can get ready to shoot. If you find yourself in a town and you've checked 10 houses already and you didn't find anything, it might be wise to move on to the next town. If the town is picked clean, you're just wearing yourself down as there is nothing to pick up. To test this, I usually run to a couple of remote houses away from the main road to see if there is anything. DayZ works with loot zones. You generally find less loot at the coast and the more you get to the northwest of the map, the more you will find. It is recommended that you play DayZ with a headset. If you encounter any other survivors, be hey, ready up? to use your yeah, microphone. Good. Good? Encountering Why other survivors is the most interesting aspect of DayZ, according to the most veteran survivors, as anything is possible. I suggest to try and engage with people, but if you do not trust the situation, it might be best to just get out of the area. If you're interested, I can maybe make a guide on how I approach other players and deal with encounters. One of the coolest ways to experience DayZ is to meet someone random at the coast and stick together as you explore the world. You will die, a lot, and it won't leave you with a nice feeling most of the time. Don't get discouraged by this, we've all been there. The harsh nature of the game is what makes us stick around for so many hours of playing. I always ask myself this question, what should I have done different in this encounter? Could I have seen the betrayal coming? Your conclusion might be things like, oh, I should have never dropped that gun, or I wish I would have closed that door so I could have heard him coming, or I didn't trust him already, why did I stick with him? Experience will make you wiser. If you're starting to get the hang of it, in the end, you will bump into military checkpoints. And if you're making really good progress, you might even get to the Northwest Airfield. These are places you should be extra careful. If you're looting there, other survivors might come and want the gun you've just picked up. It are the most profitable but most dangerous areas. That's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Please let me know if you have other tips for new survivors or if you have any questions. Are you interested in more of these kind of videos? Please let me know in the comments what you're interested in. Stay safe out there and keep on surviving. Hey all, thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to leave that most valuable comment for the giveaway and I will see you all in the next video. Cheers.